lovely Rhiannon here yeah. is nipping into the garage just now to have a sniff test on the cooling because the other day I smelt something that doesn't really belong there and that smell is petrol. So what does that mean? It means it's just down the MOT does that much out of carbons in your water. Right. So, not particularly good news for Rhiannon. Obviously it's not the end of the world and this car can be fixed, but it is going to need a head gasket. So there's that and the TF as well, it need head gaskets. Still, I'm prepared to do it. But let's talk about another car, Alfie. This is my car. This is my car called Alfie, a car of which I've said I'm not going to sell because I like it too much. But there's just one small problem with this. It's kind of too nice to keep. I wonder if somebody else could give it a better home than me. Because at the moment this is just being used as an everyday car, school run, that kind of thing. And it was today, doing the old school run thingy, that got me thinking about this. You see, this car had managed only 38,000 miles and one owner when I picked it up. Now it's got an extra 3,000. I know that's not a great deal, but I am beginning to worry about it getting ruined with everyday use. Having children in the back with their feet on the seats and things like that. But that's not the worst of it. Driving this old car in everyday traffic amongst all of the Audis that are a bit newer and for some reason have this image that they're better my car suddenly feels a bit vulnerable. I'm worried about it getting knocked into. Knocked into, and then the person who knocks into it saying, well, it's just an old car, it doesn't really matter too much. Oh, well, that would, that would kind of anger me more than I care to actually explain. This car survived 22 years with barely a mark on it, and I'm going to notice that kind of thing. It's going to, if it was, honestly, if Nigel gets knocked, I'm going to be a bit annoyed, but this, more so. Because although you can see it is actually quite dirty at the moment, it's in such nice condition. It just makes me think it should be a special occasion car rather than just an everyday car. Everyday cars get knocks. And I'm, I'm very careful where I leave it, but other people aren't. And here's a nice example. Yesterday I parked up at the school to go and pick up my girls and uh, then somebody in a new people carrier came along and parked next to me leaving a gap not dissimilar to that. And then this lady got out of her car on that side. And I watched and she didn't hit my car but obviously she came very close to it to get out of a gap that big. And then as I went into the school, I was trying to hurry them along a little bit so I could get back to my car before she got to hers. So I could get my girls in and move the car out of the way. And I managed it just about, which was good because as I looked around, she had the door swung wide open to let her children in. And I don't think that time this car would have survived without a bit of a clonk. And it is the anticipation of that other person kind of dismissing it as if it doesn't really matter it really bothers me this well at least it's not a new car just that kind of thing it's just <laughs> yeah in the town that i live there is numerous examples of horrendous driving every single day you don't have to go far before you see somebody in an Audi doing something completely irresponsible. But that's not even my main concern. My main concern is normal people. How normal people are. Yeah, I've gone on about supermarket trolleys and things like this in the past. But with good reason, because normal people push their supermarket trolleys wherever they feel like. Normal people don't put them back. Normal people, when they do put them back, 
just put them in a place where it's not particularly convenient for the next person. Normal people, when they use baskets, don't stack them on top of the other basket that's the same size. Normal people pick up items in the supermarket, then change their mind, and then just discard it and put it wherever they feel like, even if it is something that needs to be kept in the fridge. Normal, normal people do all of these kind of things that is obviously quite rude, but somehow socially acceptable. And that, when it comes to old cars, has this effect of making them worthless and creating a situation where they can just be dented and, and knackered, basically, and you shouldn't really be concerned by it. And that's where, poor Alfie, I end up thinking I'd be better off as an everyday car having this one. Because it does the job in exactly the same way, but it's not precious. It's just a car that I wouldn't be overly concerned by. And it's still a Rover, which is a plus point. But as I'm talking about this now, I feel like I'm talking myself straight back out of it. But I simply cannot do with the idea of that lovely car over there getting ruined in everyday use. It's just, it just shouldn't have to happen. And I can't justify having one silly show car another nice show car and then an everyday car just so I can keep the others from being battered. That means this one is going to have to unfortunately be for sale again. And if you know me then you'll know exactly how important it is that this car goes to the right kind of person. So if you're interested you can let me know. So, the Queen has died, and I for one, along with many, many other people, are deeply saddened by this. Uh, what really, really annoys me though are the amount of memes and little TikTok videos out there already. It's the British way to uh, find humour in things of course, but there's an awful lot of nastiness within this and the, the Queen wasn't just anyone, she was an incredible woman. I don't think you have to be a royalist to feel uh, saddened by this news. But I think to feel joy you have to have something a bit wrong upstairs.